safe y'all okay not everyone you know that looks good on the outside is gonna be good in the inside if you know what i'm saying if it is okay i'm in the military yes active duty to be exact and i decided to do something a little bit different for y'all because i know that some of y'all may not know that i am in the military and i figured why not give out some good ideas for the people who are interested in joining the military so i got my little tip notebook for y'all and i just wanted to show like you know my perspective of what i think i should have learned from the military so this goes for you know any gender you know men or women and why not listen to some insight on what it's like being in the military so why not let's get started with this video and just letting y'all know it's more than five tips okay so i'm giving y'all a little bit of a tip okay so let's get started and we just gonna get straight to it because we got about like i don't know three four little slippers or pages okay so i'm just gonna start off with number one research your job before signing that contract okay so what do i mean by that is you know your recruiter no hate no offense to the recruiters out here okay i know you're trying to get your money but recruiters might tell you a job description but some of them, you know, they probably won't give you the best job description to your knowledge or show you examples of what that job could actually be because you might actually like what the job sounds like, but you did your little research on YouTube and the internet and see that is something completely different and you are not going to put in that work and you are not going to sign your life on that dotted line. So please research the job because that's all i gotta say you don't want to be miserable on a four year or six year contract on a job that you really despise and hate so that's like my number one rule just research your job it'll save you a lifetime of regrets and any type of ill will thoughts that's in your mind when it comes to joining the military number two know the difference between a four-year contract and a six-year contract so what i mean by that is you can sign up for the military for either four years or six years for that job breaking it down let's say you want to reclass or retrain in a different job but you're in a four-year contract well what you have to do is wait until you're on your third year mark and a couple of more months after your third year mark and that's when you'll see if you'll be able to open up to reclass or retrain in a different job that you may prefer or that you may like that is in with your ASVAP scores. But the thing is you do have to re-enlist even a few more years when you reclass or retrain. So think about that aspect as well. And on the other hand, if you sign a six year contract, you have to wait until your fifth year, yes, your fifth year of your six year contract and a few months after that to see if you are willing to be open to retrain or reclass depending on what the job you specifically wanted. So that tip right there, I know that it kind of affected a lot of my friends and some of my family members because they felt as if, you know, four years, they could have easily gone by, breeze by it, and do what they want to do after that. But some people, six year contract might mean that's too much of a long term commitment and they end up being, you know, miserable with their job. So that's kind of like the little effects of that. Not bashing anyone who does a four year or a six year contract, but me personally, I did a four year contract because. I figured I didn't want to be in the military for that long. I just wanted to do it for the schooling. So I decided to chose that route for the four year contract instead of doing the whole six. Number three, 
let your recruiter know that you have either college experience, whether you went to a little bit of some college or if you have done ROTC. Now, what that means is when you have done either or, or even both, which could be better, you get to put in some of your rank in before you even sign your contract. Because I know that a lot of young people out here who have just went straight out of high school with no like college experience or whatever, and they start off with the lowest ranking. For me, that was the way that I decided to go to. I already graduated my AA degree, and I've already came in with some ranking before I even started my basic training. Having that, you know, little leverage does kind of levy up when it comes to ranking because you don't have to necessarily start out from the bottom or you have to end up signing a six year contract in order to put on some ranking, which I really don't prefer doing that. That's just my opinion. So if anyone has any hate about that in the comments, I'm just letting you know that is my opinion. It will save you a lot of trouble if you let your recruiter know that you have, you know, college experience or ROTC experience because they will put that in for your records when it comes to putting in your military package for going to basic training and to start your military experience. Number four, this is something that I didn't do, which I probably should have, but look up BMT shipper support group slash group chats. There will be, this goes for like any branch, okay? So like, let's say you're really young and you know, you want to see if there's anyone out there who's going to leave to go to basic training the same day as you are and you're just interested on you know what their experience was like and sometimes it gives you a little insight on what to expect when it comes to going to basic training because i know that could be nerve-wracking for some of you guys so what my friends told me is that they looked up certain you know support groups and group chats and it's just like a big facebook you know snapchat group chat and they just let everyone know like when they're leaving, what their job is. So it's kind of like, you know, a good way to make friends before you even join the military, even during and most likely after when you're done with your basic training, because I know that you'll make a lot of friends when you go to BMT, because there's like, um, I think I had like 40 or 50 people in my flight and it was just all women from ages, you know, 17 if they signed off by their parents to I think 45 or I don't know. I don't know the age <laughs> limit but when it comes to joining the military, but I just know that you're gonna meet a lot of different women from everywhere. The demographic is gonna be huge. And also you're gonna see like a lot of men who are within your other subgroups. So that's something to take knowledge and be aware of as well. Number five don't make any drastic decisions okay now i've seen this happen myself what i mean by that is think of how the decision is going to affect you not only in the short term but as a long term because it could affect your personal life your work life and also your family life as well if you have kids right now or in the near future so i would say when it comes to making decisions don't just do it out of spite or just do it because you're in a certain mood and you know certain people push you to that limit so that's my perspective on that number six research your bases before you put it on your uh dream sheet now what i did for putting my locations on my dream sheet it was back in i believe like one of the last few weeks of my bmt and we went into this little classroom it had computers and we went to the Air Force portal and we got to put in, you know, all the bases that we wanted to do before we left graduation. Now, you will get to pick and choose whichever you want to, whether it's on stateside, I think it's like five or six stateside, and then five or six um, overseas side. So stateside will be called CONUS and then overseas will be called OCONUS. Now, you have to be very precise because although you get to change it while you're in your training, like slash tech school for your job or whatever, you might like the sound or like, you know, the name of the area location, but the base is not it, okay? So be sure you are very mindful of that because, you know, certain area locations sound great. You might've heard of it, but you know, the whole environment slash area of that duty station could be something that you really don't like or something that you don't support. Number seven, 
when it comes to your first duty station, they will put you where the military needs you, okay? So be mindful of that, regardless of what your job is, what your rank is, they will just literally put you where they need you, okay? So don't harp on, you know, being somewhere that you really don't like. It's most likely because of them putting them where they need you. Number eight, your duty station will probably not be somewhere that you did not put on your dream sheet. So as long as what I said for my last tip, they will put you where they need you. So be mindful of that because not everyone gets to be where they're at on their dream sheet. I know a lot of my friends, it's kind of like a 50-50 chance you get to be somewhere that you obviously put on your dream sheet or somewhere completely opposite of your dream sheet. So I would say don't harp on that because I know that some people, you know, they get a little discouraged when they don't get put somewhere that they always dreamed of going and it doesn't follow their dream sheet. Number nine, be prepared for deployment. Now for me, I know that a lot of my friends, they have already been on their deployment or they're prepared for their deployment and they haven't been to their first duty station for not even a year alone. What I mean by that is regardless of your rank, regardless of your job, whether you have a desk job, a outdoor type of job, you know, personal finance, medical, any of that, you will get called to be deployed. So it's just kind of the luck of the draw because I've seen people who haven't been on deployments yet and they've been in longer than I have. And I've seen some people who've only been at their first duty station for less than a year and boom, they're already off to their first appointment. So be prepared for that because that is something you should kind of be expecting, especially if you are a first time enlistment as well. Number 10, not everyone is going to be friendly. And what I mean by that is yes, you will meet a lot of different people, but not everyone's gonna have the same expectations or they grew up the same way as you are. So I would say treat your military job just as a regular normal job because, you know, we're getting paid just like everyone else despite, you know, different rankings and different jobs, whether you're commissioned or not. But not everyone's gonna have the same nice intentions as you would coming in as a new military personnel or, you know, just first time enlistment in general. Because I've met, you know, I wouldn't say any specifics, but I've met a good handful of people and a good handful of people of not so nice people. So depending on what your job is, what your base is going to be when your first duty station, you will meet a lot of people who really either despise you or that, you know, just really likes you. So don't be so down on yourself if you meet people who don't like you at all because that's just how people are. And you know, that's just another real world experience to see whether you like it or not. Number 11, okay? This is for my young and single people who are about to join, okay? My thing is this, be safe y'all, okay? Not everyone, you know, that looks good on the outside is gonna be good in the inside, if you know what I'm saying. If y'all know what I'm saying, y'all know what I'm saying, okay? Just be safe. I know that there's gonna be a lot of good looking, good attractive men and women, but make sure y'all be safe and protected, okay? Because I, I have seen a lot of men and women who are very friendly, let me just say that, and they are not, you know, taking care of their bodies as the way they should. So you might be good and you know, you might be safe and all, but that person that you want to interact with is not that good. So be mindful of that. Always make sure that you're protected, whether it's, you know, getting tested and all that. Do what you have to do because that is all free. Last time that I checked, it's probably on shirts. Take care of that, okay? That's all I'm gonna say on that tip because I wanna see, you know, all the people that are coming into the military to be safe and just be protected, okay? Just protect yourself and stay healthy. That's all I have to say because you know, there's people who like to get around and don't care about their health, okay? You might take care of your health, but that other person don't, so that's all I'm gonna say. And that goes into my next tip, number 12, okay? Do not marry a random person that you've just seen off the streets or off base or on base, and you don't even know what their favorite color is just because you want to move out the dorms, okay? There are people who will 
let's just say they will tell your business and you don't want them to. Now, by all means, do what you gotta do if you feel like you wanna move out the dorms, but um, there will be people who will, you know, kind of question as to why did you get married that quick or, you know, how do you know this person? And sometimes they will find out that you didn't marry that person for that, you know, good intention. So you could get in trouble for that. So don't do that. I've seen people do that. I'm not saying me personally, I've done that before because no, I wouldn't do that. You know, why? That's kind of stupid, but hey, I've seen some people do it. And you know, some of them got caught, some of them didn't, but you know, the, hey, that ain't my business. That, that ain't my business, okay? So that's all I'm gonna say off that. My last tip would be number 13 is the palace chase. So the palace chase is a military separation opportunity, but there is a cash. So let's say you sign a four year contract and you already want to go off into the guard or reserve. So you have to do two years active duty and then they'll let you do two years of the guard or reserve but this is the catch that i didn't know until i did further research on is that once you do your two years in reserve you have to re-enlist two more years into the guard reserves to fulfill that four-year contract now i know that some people think that you know that's the way that they want to go for but not everyone knows that this is what it fully goes into with this palace chase because i was considering on doing that but for me if i want to be out the military i just want to at least fulfill my full contract and just be done with it instead of you know kind of leering on that whole military process so that is you know a big tip for some people who probably are already considering doing this before they even join the military so that's all i have for today and i hope that y'all enjoyed these tips or you know ideas or things or suggestions i should say that i've had while experiencing the military and also make this military experience a good one no matter what the job is because there will be people who just don't like you for whatever reason that they have so continue to have a really positive attitude really positive mindset when it comes to joining this job force because there will be people who like to tear other people down and all i have to say is just stay in your lane and mind your own business because that can go a really long way there will be other people who will try to think that what you're doing is wrong, but you're really doing the right thing. So don't let other people's, you know, words or actions get in the way of what you're trying to do with your life because that's how much it. It's your life. Y'all do what y'all want to do, but do it very respectively, okay? Because tearing other people down just to climb up to the top, it doesn't really work. It doesn't last that long in the end. So that's really all that I have for the new people who decide to join the military. And A, take advantage of the college tuition assistance, okay? I know that y'all might think, dang, I didn't really wanna go to the military for college, but hey, they pay for it. And I don't think y'all wanna be get tied up to student loans like I had to when I was in college before joining the military. So make sure y'all take advantage of that. So if y'all like this video, give this thing a thumbs up, y'all, okay? Because I didn't have to let y'all know I was in the military. I mean, some of y'all probably already knew that. But, hey, comment down below if you enjoyed this video and let me know any other video ideas y'all want to see me do. And make sure y'all hit that little subscribe button right there. It's red. Now, I want you to change that, okay? Now, once you hit all three, which is the like, subscribe, and comment, you need to be a part of the what, what? wavy family okay so i hope y'all enjoyed this video and i'll see y'all next time